Hey, Fero fam. I just wanted to say, you know, if you like the content that we produce, please give us a like, subscribe, and also click that bell button because it really, really helps the channel grow and more people know about Fero. You might have noticed you have seen an uptick in interest in privacy coins, even with like, you know, the many exchanges and regulations trying to ban privacy coins in particular. And there's a very clear reason why. And this is because of the rise of what we call CBDCs or central bank digital currencies. You know, this is no longer, you know, just in the planning stage. We are already seeing countries implementing it. Of course, you know, I would say the most famous would be, you know, China CBDCs, right? It's actually really hard to try and just use cash in, in, in uh, China anymore. But even in Europe, right, there's, they're already on their social media, they're already talking about their own Euro CBDC. And the U.S. is already like you know actively talking about the, their own CBDC, and in certain countries in Africa, they have I think Nigeria has also implemented their CBDC. So CBDCs, they are not just you know something in the future; they are already coming, and they are already in implementation in several countries. And it's a clear trend that we are going to see more of this. So, what is CBDC? You know, why are we why, why are we so concerned about it, right? So right now, you know, especially even like Gary Gensler, the, the head of the SEC, you know, he was saying, why, why, are we, why do we need digital currency? Our currency is already digital, right? All the money in your bank, it doesn't, you know, the vast majority of it doesn't exist in a physical form. It exists as an entry on the bank's ledger. To liken CBDCs to be just another form of digital currency actually sort of downplays the implications of what a CBDC can do. Like unlike right now with a digital currency, well, like you know, the money that is held in your banks and whatnot, there's no independent, there's no like central body that can control, like, oh, block this money, block that. Of course, you have to instruct the bank to block it, right? It's not like a central body that can just switch a switch and and just turn it off, right? And obviously, banks are not going to be so, you know, keen to, to you know, needlessly lock down their customers' funds because people's, people are going to run away from their bank and go to someone else. So there is kind of like a, a sort of decentralized uh, nature to it, even though, like, you know, fiat money is centralized. But the CBDC takes that to the next level because CBDCs are like, uh, you know, I would say like blockchain currencies like Ethereum and whatnot. They are programmable. And you will see that, you know, what may seem very useful and, you know, very like innocuous. Like, for example, you know, let's say during COVID, right? We had all these delays and, you know, giving all these incentives to people who, who needed food, who needed stuff to, to buy their stuff. A CBDC might have helped there because they can say, all right, you know, I'm going to give you like $300, but this $300 can only be used to spend on food. You know, obviously we know, you know, we have friends that kind of misuse their, uh, you know, incentives. So I wouldn't say incentives, kind of like relief funds uh, that during the COVID period. But, and you might say, wow, that sounds good, right? That means now the, the government can give very targeted relief. But that also opens many, many doors, right? So first of all, say, oh yeah, okay, you know, we're only going to give you this money that can be only used for food. But what happens if they start restricting what you can buy with it, right? Oh, okay, you cannot buy... Uh, okay, pornography. Okay, maybe I can accept that. But it will expand further. Oh, you know, by the way, uh, we think, uh, you know, gaming is, is too much. You know, you shouldn't be gaming more than a certain amount of hours. We can, of course, you know, in China, there's already like limits to how much children can actually uh, access like games and internet. So it gives the central bank a lot of fine grain control of how you should be spending your money, which to me, you know, your money is your business. That You should be free to spend your money as how you like it, right? It's, it's your choice. It's your independence. It's a very key part of who we are. It's not for the state to tell us how we spend our money. That's not how free, free market economies work. And it can be abused, right? So, 
just imagine say, oh, you can only spend your money in large, uh, you know, these large recognized departmental stores or chains and whatnot, because, you know, for some reason, they could always come up with that. And we know how powerful lobbyists are and how powerful narratives can be when they are being pushed on a very serious level by government. The other thing that is also even more insidious is that it can be used as a weapon, right? You can be, you, if you see any sort of political opposition, you can effectively lock it down. If you can cut people off from access to their funds and money, that is a way to control any sort of dissent. And we are already seeing it. And like, for example, in China, you know, this, there's this, uh, just to quote a very, you know, uh, an example of that, something that I'm familiar with. So there was this guy in China, his name is uh, Su Xiaodong, and he is, he's a bit of an ass. <laughs> he's an he's a MMA fighter, and he goes around challenging all this, uh, you know, traditional Chinese martial arts. So like he gets people from Wushu or Tai Chi and all of this, like even people who come from Yip Man uh, lineage, challenges them to a fight. And then when they, they agree, he just beats them up. Right, so so yeah, okay, you know, a bit of a, a funny fella, right? But what happened was quite like alarming to me because what happened was he challenged this Tai Chi master, some Kung Fu master, and instead of agreeing to fight him, the Kung Fu master reported him to the authority, saying like this guy, you know, is trying to disrespect, you know, this uh, traditional martial arts. And what happened was because of that. Uh, his social credit score was actually uh, reduced. And what that means is that he is cut off from several parts of the economy. He cannot, he cannot fly. You know, he, he cannot rent an a expensive hotel, right? He cannot do all these things. And this is only possible, you can only enforce it because you have a centralized currency, Right. If you have cash, you know how are you going to stop that? Because I just go up to the hotel, I go up to the airplane, and like you know, just pay. Right. Of course, not everything needs identity. Right. So this is kind of like even as something as petty as that, you know, you can cut off someone from the financial system, and the CBDC allows that. So what may seem as oh very convenient, I don't have to keep money in my thing. I may not even have to open a bank account. Yes, you know, we, we don't like banks, but this is more of like, it's, you're taking a power away from the banks who still have to look after their customers, but giving it to a central bank where we have no choice but to use fiat in, in many cases, right? Uh, it's, it's the only legal tender in our country. So this is, a, I would say, a very, very key thing that we have to be worried about. And, you know, privacy coins is one of those things that really, I would say, is an answer or a counter to this, right? Because unlike, I would say, like transparent ledgers, transparent, you know, blockchains like Bitcoin or Ethereum, you can say, okay, I freeze, you know, I give an order to freeze a particular address or I blacklist certain funds. And this is already happening today. With privacy coins, you know, all coins are in this this indistinguishable you can't see where they're going to you can't see how much someone is holding so that is in a way is kind of like the exact opposite of what a cbdc is and obviously you know governments are saying don't worry you know uh, a cbdc will be privacy preserving this is the most utmost you know priority but if that's the case, if they are so much about privacy, why are they putting in regulations to ban privacy coins? If, if CBDCs are private, why are you banning privacy coins? Because they enable money laundering, right? And what we should be doing is that not giving the state apparatus more infrastructure to control our lives. You know, we, we already have so much of our lives being monitored by companies and, you know, our, we have like identity cards, we need identity for this and that, we have bank accounts and all of that. We are already, in a way, to a certain extent being controlled, even our communications are being controlled. So money or at least cash or like privacy coins are one of kind of those last frontiers and we should not be giving in or empowering the state apparatus to have more control over our lives if we want to be free citizens 
So yeah, just wanted to, you know, make people aware of why Firo is doing what we're doing. You know, we are not like, oh, you know, championing crime or illegal things. But that's a side issue, right? If you think about it, we have to remember what do most criminals use today? The existing financial system, fiat, right? The US dollar, right? And, and that has not stopped them, right? So kind of why painting privacy coins as a bogeyman is, is kind of a distraction to what they're really trying to achieve. So I just wanted to make sure that that was clear and why we're not going to compromise.